Hi again. We're in Three Worlds, Plan of Redemption, Nelson Barber, Charles Taze Russell, page 62, a new chapter heading, Judgment, Trial, and Probation. Will the Saints be brought to trial? Perhaps no subject of Revelation is so little understood as is that of the judgment. Probation and judgment mean one and the same, that is, a trial. Probation, says Webster, is the act of proving a trial or examination. In the Methodist Episcopal Church, converts are placed on probation, that is, on trial for six months, and if they pass through this trial successfully, they are admitted to full membership. During this six months trial, they are ex expected to learn the ways and doctrine of that church. The day of judgment is the day of trial or probation for eternal life. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That is, all mankind must pass through a trial or probation under him in, in order to determine with them the question of eternal life or eternal death. Christ himself submitted to a trial, won the victory, and became the firstborn from the dead. And now, at the judgment of this world, now is the prince of this world cast out. And I, if I be lifted up, will draw all unto me. That is John 12 verse 31. The Greek here for judgment is the same word as in Matthew 11:24, and that class of texts and evidently refers to the final and decisive judgment. The final judgment of all mankind then began with the head of the church, who of course passed his trial triumphantly, and thus abolished or conquered death, and commenced the process which shall cast out the prince of this world, or him that hath the power of death. Prior to this, their probation was for an earthly inheritance and a fleshly kingdom, and had been a total failure. But now he sends forth judgment, that is trial, unto victory, according to Matthew 12, verse 20. And life and immortality are brought to light by his own successful probation. After Christ, the next to pass through the judgment, that is probation or trial, is the church of the firstborn, or house of God whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end, says Hebrews 3, verse 6. That is, if we pass the trial successfully. Having seen that the judgment of this world began with our Lord, we will now show that the judgment on his church also transpires in this life. In other words, judgment, not the sentence, but the trial, transpires during probation here on the church hereafter on the world. For the time is come, says Peter in his first epistle, the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if first at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? As judgment means trial, it follows that where probation ends, the judgment ends. With the gospel church, it ends at death. And with the world, it will end with their time of trial. The objection may be urged that judgment comes after death. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. That's Hebrews 9, verse 27, by the way. This is true only of mankind in general, but the gospel church is an exception. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into judgment, but is passed over from death unto life, according to John 5, verse 24. The word judgment, which in this text is rendered condemnation, is crisis, the same as in Hebrews 9, 27, and also in Matthew 12, 36. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment, that is crisis, and clearly means the final great decisive day of trial. Those who accept of Christ here have their trial or judgment in this life and have passed from death unto life. That is, the sentence of life is pronounced. Sentence of life, strange phrase. The sentence of life is pronounced and they shall not come into judgment or another trial. Are the words of the master. Judgment is not executed until after the trial, but the trial is the judgment. And with the saint ends at death, so that with the apostle he can say, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith, I am not going to another trial, this is a paraphrase of Barber, I am not going to judgment, the sentence of eternal life has been already awarded. 
and back to the text, and a crown of righteousness is laid up for me, which he, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only. This is the some of the last words of Paul, of course. He doesn't cite the text, but I believe it's Second Timothy chapter 4. If sentence had not been pronounced at the end of Paul's probation, and he has yet to stand a trial to decide whether a crown of righteousness is laid up for him, then the Holy Spirit was premature in passing sentence. He that believeth on him that sent me is passed from death unto life, and shall not come into judgment. Hence all the future judgment for the saint in its execution, or the receiving of the reward, sown a natural body, raised a spiritual body, which second birth is the crown of life, neither can they die any more. Thus the judgment of this world, which Christ said began with himself, who was tried in all points, has thus far been a probationary trial for life. And there is abundance of evidence that the great judgment day is designed and set apart expressly for the purpose of placing the world on a probation or trial for life. It is certain the mass of mankind from Adam to the present time have not had probation in Christ, the only name given under heaven or among men whereby they must be saved. And no one can escape, either in this age or the next, of standing a probationary trial for his life at Christ's tribunal. For to this end Christ both died and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. For we shall all, and then again an insertion here, either while living or after death, stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Romans 14, 9 to 11. Now, of course, you notice at the beginning the definition, which is then acted upon and, and commented on endlessly here. The definition of trial as a probation period where does he get it? He doesn't get it from Bible dictionaries. He gets it from Webster. This is, is this what the best scholars of the church say about the word judgment or crisis? And this, I think, is the beginning of the fallacy of Russellism, i.e., you're going to the wrong sources for your definition of even theological words. We'll put a link on to uh, Romans 14 discussion. Ray Franz discusses the the judgmentalism of the watchtower and contrasts it with Paul's attitude in Romans 14 where you don't Paul plainly says you don't divide the church over things that are of well things that are not of infinite worth in other words gospel issues you don't divide the church over matters of conscience so Ray Franz did talk about that and here's the video on your screen next time more about the probation period that Barber and Russell assume is the true meaning of the word judgment.